Yeah, I got a question for both of y'all, right? And I mentioned this earlier, but I'm glad you guys are here. What we see on We're Earth shocked. Society is a, we, we see an apparent horizon, correct? Yes. Okay. Keon, you with me? Yeah, I'm listening. Go ahead. Okay. Apparent horizon. 360 degrees we spin in a circle, we see an apparent horizon. So my question to you guys is, at what point in height does that apparent horizon then become a physical horizon? Because, and the reason I ask this is because from all of the footage that I can see from SpaceX and NASA with live streams and videos, the curvature changes based on camera angle. Or camera type as well, right? So what they may perhaps camera type as well, yeah. So yeah. to me, this, this cannot be the case that it's a actual physical curvature that we're seeing from the space station. It maybe if we go farther out, but we don't have like a lot, you know, records from that. So right. what so do you guys you, feel about that? You use two words. One was apparent and one was physical and yes. you use them as if they were mutually exclusive. All right. Something apparent is not physical and something physical is not apparent. That's the way you use the words. Is that right? Yes. Okay. I, I don't think they're mutually exclusive, right? I see the horizon in its apparent position, but that is physical water has a physical location. It's just that where we see it is not its geometric location. So refraction uh, moves the horizon up. And because the path of light is curved, it's also further away. The, the point that is the horizon is further away than the geometric horizon. So that, those words to me are not mutually exclusive. It's like if, if you are shooting a fish with an arrow, right? Fish in the water. The, you see the fish in its apparent position, but its, it's geometric location is like lower the, the fish isn't non-physical, right? The fish is a physical thing. It just appears in its apparent location. Right. So what I'm saying is what we see, what we see is we aren't seeing the physical thing. We are seeing the apparent. Yeah, I've just explained why I don't think those two words are mutually exclusive. Like if, if light, let's say light bounces off a house, right, and comes towards me and mm -hmm. takes a curved path, right? takes a curved mm -hmm. path because it's going through a density gradient. Is mm -hmm. the house physical? House is physical, yes. Right. But I see it in its apparent position because the light took a curved path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that doesn't change anything about what I'm saying, though. So even if, even if what you're saying is true, like let's say that it's a circular shape outside of what we see right we can't see it uh because we're only seeing uh the refracted limitation of our sight right so we're seeing an apparent horizon so even if it uh was there we're seeing it in a different space right we're seeing it where we see it not where it actually is and that's what i'm saying we're mm -hmm. seeing an apparent horizon not the actual physical curvature. Yeah. And you keep using those that, words, apparent and physical, as if they are opposites. They they are though. But I, we, we just sense, agreed, this, right? That the house is physical. Yes, the house is physical, but we're talking right. about limit we're talking about limit of sight, right? Well, so we I have, don't know we what have limit a limitation. Of sight is. Okay, so when you when you when I first uh was saying we, we stand on earth and we spin 360 degrees in a circle we have a limit that's our horizon that's the limit of our sight we can't see beyond that without technology right without an aid what no incorrect okay oh that's my. interesting How so? <laughs> what do you mean like canagoo uh, uh, right canagoo is 160 miles away how far away do you think the horizon is Right, but that's with an A. That's with the sun moving behind it. Without the sun moving behind it, we don't see that. Okay, any right. uh, any boat going over the horizon, the horizon is closer than the boat. Okay. 
So how is the horizon a limit if you can see further than it? The horizon is behind the boat. What are you talking about? What? No, no, no. I see what he's saying because he, if it looks to us, it looks like it's in front of the boat because the boat is, you know, support, you know, going down, you know, or yeah. disappearing bottom up. Um, so what I'm saying the is mountain, the mountain salute. Oh, yes, I'm on some abstract. The horizon is closer to any object. On your clearest day, as far as you can see, you are always going to have a limitation on how far you can see things. The only right. way that the only That's way it the works horizon, in right? reverse, the only way it works in reverse is if there's a distant light source where the light is coming towards you. Right, that can that can penetrate through you know atmosphere or from a distance. Right, for example, the sun. Right, the only time we see that is when it's coming to our uh, area of vision. Right, so everything we see is coming into our area of vision. Beyond, so then we have a limit. Beyond that, we can't see. How, how is the limit the horizon then? Because eventually. Even with a even with a backlit sun back there, you would still reach a point where you can no longer see objects there, and everything converges from ground to sky, sky to ground. It converges. There's a convergence point there. But that's as not the horizon, you, right? How, how is that the horizon? Like you, you heard about Jaren's uh, Jaren's observation at uh, San different, Diego, right? No, maybe you have a different definition of horizon. So let me. Uh, ask you what do you define your horizon as so so we can be on the yeah, same page so like a, an ocean horizon i'm a glober right so i, I yeah. actually define it a way that you're not going to like it's the point right. at which the uh beyond beyond that point anything starts to get disappearing bottom up it's the you know quote unquote edge of the sphere okay that's interesting because you brought up kanegu and Hey guys, when I have a minute, I'd like to chime in when there's time. Hey, hey go uh, go we've got a debate, champ. Go ahead. Hey, what up, bro? Because I'm, I'm, you, you know a lot about the uh, horizon. Maybe you can explain it in a way that'll get through to him. Go ahead. Yeah. So this is um, very, mo way more difficult to do without using imagery like I do on YouTube. But I think I could explain it here. If, um, and I know that I'll be given the time to explain it without being interrupted, which makes this the greatest hangout ever. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so, so the horizon, I'm not talking about refraction. I'm not talking. <laughs> I'm not talking about refraction. It's the horizon is not just the limit of how far we can see. It's the limit of how far we can perceive depth. So imagine yourself standing in front of a perfectly flat floor or flat water or whatever, and there's just perfectly smooth and everything. And you draw a line between halfway between where you see the horizon and your feet. And that halfway line, if you measured it, like if you were looking out, that halfway line might only be 50 feet or 100 feet or, you know, a couple hundred feet. The from that halfway line to the horizon, there's probably 50 more of those same segments of the same amount of feet, but they get closer and closer and closer the farther out you go because your angle to them. So, um, an example to do is get an eight and a half, 11 piece of paper, draw a line in the middle that's segment one, then take that upper segment, draw a line in the middle that's segment two, take that upper piece cut that in half, the next one, cut that in half, cut that in half. Each one of those segments from your perspective is getting smaller, but if you had an orthographic view of those, they'd all be the same distance. Right. And when you get to the point where you cannot determine that the next line is farther because they're literally stacked on top of each other, that is your horizon, all right? Okay. So hold on, I'm gonna take this a little further. So that's your horizon. So when you have something, um, a boat, whatever it is, that is in your first segment and it is right at your feet, whatever. Let's say, let's say, not a boat. Let's just say we have a a an object that's um, half of your height, and it's right at your feet. 
if we moved it to the second line, which is halfway across that sheet of paper, it's now, let's just say it's half the size. And because it, it, it's not really getting smaller, orthographically it would be the same size because all those segments would be the same. It would be half the size. And if you drew a line from your eyes um, to the skimming the top of that, it would touch the water, water much farther away than the first segment did. If you do, if you do that line from your eyes, looking right down towards it, it would it would have a short segment from its tangent to your eye line to the water. Then you move it out one segment, it's much farther. Move it out to the next one, it's half of that size. So each time you move it one segment, it becomes half of the size before. And when you get out to that point where you cannot determine any more depth of field, that is your horizon. Now, here's the catcher, right? As, as that object moves from line to line to line, your depth of field is, no, is not seeing it any farther, but it is seeing it getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Each time it moves one segment, it's half of the size it was before. So that's why something that is lower than your eyes can block something way taller than your eyes. All right. Mm. So I have to respond to that. This is in reference to your video a few weeks ago where you had the pencils on the ground, right? And yeah. You had a bookcase, a bookcase at the back. Yeah, well, the bookcase right. had nothing to do with it, but go ahead. Well, it does. It really does, right? Go ahead. You're, you're sort of making an analogy like the, the chessboard analogy, right, where you get lower down on the chessboard and the the closer squares, you know, are, are having a bigger apparent size and then the, the squares at the far end of the chessboard have a really small Fact. Size, apparent size. Yeah, I agree. Right. Completely agree, but just not relevant. The, the way we look at things is we look at – Things that are vertical, like mountains, boats, yeah. uh, buildings, right? Because Correct. they don't suffer from that effect. No, they actually they do. So this is this is the part. I, I thank you for going to my next part. The sky is exactly the same, right? Right. You get your, you, the sky is your midway point is just a, a section of sky, and then you cut that in half, cut that in half, and as you get down towards the horizon, you have the same stacking effect where it just gets compressed, compressed, compressed into that same horizon line. So the bottoms of buildings, and we can show you this in pictures, um, gets compressed, 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 and you lose the bottom. Now, the, the, that building, that mountain or whatever, that is far beyond your limit of view, that's where the limit of view is where all of the lines come together, it is getting compressed into those infinitely smaller segments that you cannot you cannot perceive the depth perception so let's treat your pencils on the floor as the ocean and your bookcase as a building when you lowered your camera did the bookcase or the building disappear bottom up oh it would if i had a room that was a couple hundred did yards it? long well no it did was it? right there. you 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 so yeah, so that's... you're so he, you're, you're saying that I'm looking across, um, let's say, a three-mile segment of water and Mount Rushmore is there, okay, or Mount Everest, whatever, okay? And, and so you're saying, is it hidden behind that? That's not to scale. Like, if that was a Home Depot and my bookcase was at the other end of the room, sure, half of it would be hidden by those pencils. Yeah. Did, it, yeah. did it, was it obscured bottom-up in your footage? If you're it's standing 100 question. yards from Mount Everest, and you had a, a row of cars going three miles to Mount Everest. Are the cars going to hide Mount Everest? Of course not. It, it's, a, it's a very simple question. In you, your you, footage, was the bookcase at all hidden bottom up? Well, this, you obviously uh, don't understand anything, so I'm not going to take this conversation any further. <laughs> right, just just give, them, give them, okay, let, just, let's, say, let's say no. Okay, let's say no. What's your point then? Because he explained how that's not actually relevant to pencils themselves getting smaller. Right. So what's your point here? All right, okay. so Dave's video was about how a three-foot wave could supposedly hide a 250-foot wave, a hop feet high ship, right? And I brought this up with Jaron, said, how's Dave going to fuck this up today? And Jaron said to me, oh, he must mean that the, the wave is three foot above his eye line. Nope. And I said, no, Dave thinks it's a three-foot wave. Yep. So you I might had, have to... Yeah, well, yeah, I, I sort of... 
so I actually just made new uh, a new graphic because because thanks to you guys, the 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 people that are, are coming at me, uh, saying that I looked at it orth orthographically and I made it smaller. Yeah, I'm not the greatest graphic artist, but because of your input, I've made a new demonstration. And uh, as soon as I see it, I don't know what your argument will be, but it actually shows how a three foot wave can hide Mount Everest. Okay, so let's let's assume I'm on top of a thousand foot mountain, and I'm looking across a valley to another thousand foot mountain. Is it obstructed? Across a valley, I guess not. Across no, I guess not. Okay, Let, let's say there's a building in the valley. How tall would that building have to be to obscure my view of that other mountain? Thousand feet. Right. <laughs> so how does a three foot wave hide something when you are above the wave? You're six well, feet looking at over yeah, a three foot wave. Have you never done this? This is this is actually. I mean, if you if you just lay down on the on the beach and see that if there's you know there's if it's a calm beach, there's not very high yeah. waves. Just the water itself will block something in the distance. I don't. I don't oh. get logic here. He, Dave's six so, feet. So, he's above the waves. He's above the waves. Right. The wave can block no more. No. Than three foot on a flat earth. No, no, no. Because the mountain is farther away than you are the ground ramps up that's how we see and as it goes away it gets smaller if that three foot wave was halfway between me between the you know me and the of the thing no it won't hide it but if the if the object is multiple times distance farther it's multiple reductions in 50 percent 50 percent 50 percent smaller and then it will hide behind it so you're not being fair by saying a thousand foot mountain, a thousand foot mountain, and it's something halfway in between. You yeah, have to six foot you mountain. Have, so so yeah. Six foot mountain, six foot mountain. Wait, How tall does the instruction need to feet. be? So so uh, so measure I'm, in feet or better in yeah, yeah. meter. Well, well, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. So 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 let's say I'm on a thousand foot mountain and um not too far from me is a thousand and three foot mountain, right? And then a hundred times farther than that thousand and three foot mountain is a another. Let's go fifteen hundred foot mountain. That fifteen hundred foot mountain will be smaller and lower and be hidden by the thousand and three foot mountain. Right, because the thousand and three foot mountain is above you. Is right? it? No, no, you are I, six feet, and the wave is three feet. You are above the wave. It, it's, yeah. it's literally looking from one mountain across a valley to another mountain, and you got the correct answer, a thousand feet. Like, why can't you apply that to your wave? Because it, no, does, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, the That's scale. Exactly the scale. You're, missing, you're missing the scale. And yes. that you're just because you're above it that you can see it, that's, that's – uh, no, that's, that's wrong, brother. Um, yeah. I, I understand it, completely what Dave is saying. You have to understand you that. Dave, the right answer. The, the ha you have to understand. It, it's – Imagine you're standing, um, you know, six foot tall person, and there's something three feet right in front of you, and you have a um, a, a never ending uh, extendable yardstick. So that yardstick goes from your eyes, touches the tangent of the box, and touches the floor. And let's say um, the distance between the box and the floor is three feet. Now we just start dragging that box farther and farther and farther away. The the ruler extends um, longer and longer. You'll watch the 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 distance between the the bottom of the box and where it touches the floor it's going to get longer and longer and longer and longer and there will be a point where i can't even determine that that line isn't parallel from the ground it'll look parallel when i get that three foot box i don't know a mile away 10 miles away whatever it is and right. and that line to me will look parallel right, right. so when if i put a six foot box right on the far side of that and i started dragging it away it's going to get smaller and smaller, and it will be underneath that ruler, that that line, you know, as it gets smaller. But it has to be multiple times distance farther. I don't know why you guys can't understand that. So you've got a six-foot observer and this uh, infinitely long uh, stick or whatever. Mm -hmm. You keep pushing that three-foot box. Oh, <coughs> keep pushing that three-foot box away. It remains three until feet it in the touches. Air. Yep, until it touches the cruise ship. At what height will it hit the cruise ship? Well, it doesn't doesn't matter. 
That doesn't matter. Three feet, Dave. You're not, feet. You're, you're not listening. I'm going to say it again. So let's say we, we move it infinitely far away, and now it's touching the, the cruise ship at three feet. Okay, perfect. Great. Right. And to me, that yardstick looks... So it looks didn't so, block it, right? Let me finish what I'm saying. So to me, that yardstick from my eyes to that ruler at whatever that pretty far distance is, is looking pretty parallel to the water. We can agree that I probably can't deter discern that it's not parallel because it looks parallel. But it's only touching the cruise ship at three feet because the, the cruise ship's right next to it. So let's say that distance is X, whatever it is. And I move that um, cruise ship 2X away. Well, now it's touching the cruise ship from my point of view higher. It's get, no. It, Well, no, no, it's not. It's still <laughs> touching. No, no, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I said that wrong. It's still touching the three feet, but the cruise ship is getting smaller. So the cruise ship in, in, from when it's right next to the um, box is, let's say it's 300 feet high. If I move it twice the distance away, the cruise ship's only 150 feet high. If I no, move it one more segment, no, no, in, in, in angular size from the ground yeah. up, from feet, my point of view. Not an angular size measurement. Though. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, its angular size is getting reduced by 50% every time I move it one segment farther. It's going to get reduced, 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 reduced. Now, I get it. In your math, you don't understand how that happens, but it does happen. And it will get smaller than the angular size of my much, much, much closer three-foot box wave. Okay, so the wave is right up against the cruise ship and it hits the cruise ship at three feet. Yeah. How much of the ship is hidden? Let me ask you a question. <laughs> oh, come on. No, me. no, I already told you three feet, but here's right. the thing. So, so it so, doesn't so, block 250 feet. You're, you're, it's really you're, simple. You're not hearing. Does the cruise ship get smaller as it moves farther away? In angular size, yes. Okay, it angular size. Free- it, it, get, it gets smaller in my view. Let me ask you another question. So does the three feet. The, so no, no. The three, the three foot box, yes. the three foot box, does it get smaller when it doesn't move any farther away? No. Okay. So if I move that ship away, it is getting smaller and smaller and smaller while my three foot box stays the same height. You okay. can actually do this and actually see it happen yourself with a physical model on a floor. All right? You can also draw the graphics and do it and slide that box out across your screen and watch that angular tangent line go right over the larger ship. But your bookcase yeah. was not hidden bottom up. You're talking, <laughs> you're talking about Mount Everest next to a little tiny scale model. Well, or scale, show me a, a bigger scale model where it does get hidden. I, that's like what I'm going more, to do. You're on it. As soon as I, listen, the, I need to, I don't have access to be able to film in like the Home Depot, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it because you guys, um, you know, are, are, are coming up with great ideas to show how your model doesn't work and how perspective is the answer. I, I don't, it's, it's amazing that you can't see this or you're just being disingenuous. I'm not sure. Oh, Dave, I think on that note, I've got to feed the doggies. Um, I do want to ask you, though, Dave, I've, yeah. I've emailed you this before. Yeah. Are there objective, measurable criteria to meet your Bitcoin challenge? It's just proof of the globe. Just proof of the globe. You bring it, bring it to Flat Earth Fridays, and if they say, hey, you got me, uh, you win. Yeah, but as if Flat Earth is going to, ever going to agree that it's proof of the globe, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's why I said objective. It- measurable yeah. criteria compared to something like McToon's challenge yeah. where you have to solve it using flat earth and get yeah. within 25 yeah, miles. With it, with it, the, my, my challenge isn't to get within flat earth. My challenge is to prove the globe. Right. To whose standard of proof? Yours? No, just any, any, you know, listen, if you have something rock solid, let's, let's, let's hear it. Yeah. I can measure eight inches per mile squared. Right. But if I present it to you, you are just going to go, no, nah. ah, yeah, it's, right. not it's true. subjective. Not true. So are there objective criteria? Yeah. How about this? How about I show you that my three foot wave can block a cruise ship and then you can just give up? Yeah. That'd be good. <laughs> That'd be good. Um, anyway, so I, yeah, I will have to say that your criteria are subjective and it's a illegitimate challenge. There you go. Awesome. Hey, uh, anyway, Dave, I love you. I love you proud. I'll be uh, going feeding doggies now. Catch you guys later. See you. Appreciate you, Bruce. Uh, Thank you. Dave. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 <laughs> a three and foot wave so would be Dave, a ripple. Dave and Keon. Wave so or Wait, wait, hold on. Two, two people are talking. Say again. So, ba- uh, all right. So, back to my question, right? All right. Sorry if I got a little snappy. I don't know how you guys do it. I get a little crazy listening to uh, that. Sometimes it's like that. We get it. 
Um, who, by the way, who was that? I, don't, I know the voice. I don't know who he is. Ruhif. President oh, that, That's Ruhif. Yeah, he's dog Ruhif. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> wow. Wow. But, but hey, listen, God bless people like that because they really give me great ideas. My, some of my best videos come from uh, people like that. So my next video, or actually the next live stream I do, I've got, I've got the graphics. They suck, but they're actually, they, they show the points. Hey, just the Thanks. way you broke that down, though, was really well said. Having the demonstration to back it up is going to be great because, like, I, I don't know if he's disingenuous or what, but, like, everything you said is, like, super coherent and makes sense. Obviously, yeah. it would scale it proportional, and it's like, yeah, if that one's not getting smaller and the other thing is, like, I don't know, it's, it's pretty... There pretty, will be a point where... <laughs> and and, and he, here's something which I've never brought up before, and I brought it up with Jaron just on a private call, and uh, and it sounded like it was the first time he ever thought of it. Just like, you know, and I like my analogy that I just came up with, eight and a half, 11 pe pieces of paper, draw a line, and then cut the next segment in half, cut the next mega segment in half. Those are all equal distances looking at orthographically. The sky does the same thing, which is why we reduce the, the bottoms of the buildings get cut off. And then a tiny little wave will hide the bottoms of all of those compressed parts of the building, you know, if it's far enough away to be compressed. At a certain right. point, everything is so small, you can't tell the difference. So Jaron actually, as I, was, as I was explaining it, he was taking the bottom of the building and saying, okay, I'll put that one, that part in between this line and that part between this line. And it actually matched, you know, the missing uh, amount of the bottom of um, Chicago or whatever it was we were looking at. So it, it's... It's something that we need to look into further, but the sky and the ground do the same thing. Okay. So Dave, with that, with that said, and we, I think most of us here understand that if you lift off from the ground, my question was, uh, at what point does it become, does the apparent horizon become an actual physical curvature? Never. <laughs> that's okay. All right. So that, Keon, what, what is your, sorry, that's, that's where I'm at with it. Keon, what, what do you think? Cause you're the uh, next Glober up. Well, hold on, hold on. We, we do have a lot of hands. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, all let's right. go through the hands real quick and then we'll double back to Keon. 